talks on closing Manos Processing Center proceeding. National Planning Minister applauds work by Airports Corporation. And angry Koyari landowners plan to move with shutdown of water services. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening, I'm Helen Sayer with Wednesday's News. Lay MP Lujaya Koza raised concerns in Parliament this morning on anomalies between the city authorities of Lay and Bougainville. The MP said the 2014 to 2015 DDA acts did not apply to Bougainville and asked the Prime Minister to come clear on the matter. The Prime Minister, in response, said the authority board is part of the government's continuous support to Bougainville and it will enable for services to flow freely. Following yesterday's question by South Bougainville MP Timothy Masiu on the creation of a district development authority board in South Bougainville, the lay MP was also keen to know why there were differences of lay district and South Bougainville, particularly in funding. That the difference of Hagen, Kokopo and Lay not being DDAs but city commissions, and if the two other cities were in the 2016 budget, why the lay city commission was not, Next question, will the intended supplementary budget cover funding, uh, cover funding uh, anomalies for Arab and uh, for Lay District or are we expecting that in the 2017 budget proper? The Prime Minister in response said funding differences for Bougainville is because of the continuous support the national government has on Bougainville. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think it's only fair that uh, the three electorates in Bougainville are uh, also given the funding that they require to bring services uh, to their districts. Uh, it is unfair uh, to say that uh, uh, they will entirely depend on ABG to uh, provide those services to our communities uh, in, in Bougainville, Mr. Speaker. He said for Lay, the only difference is because there is no active participation of the local MP in the city authority. In the case of Mount Argen and Kokopo, they are starting to be rolled out because we have cooperation from the members of those electorates. Mr. Speaker, uh, many, many will recall uh, that the member for Lay herself declined or she resigned. She resigned to be the chairperson of uh, Lay City Authority. What's your point of order? However, that did not come down well with Koza, as she claimed the Prime Minister was not answering the questions he raised. Let the Prime Minister not mislead this Honourable House. We come back to the anomalies in the legislative amendments that need to be done to tie all these entities together so that not only Bougainville gets there, whatever, but the, the um, Lay District and Hagen and Kokopo also get their funding. Mr. Speaker, today as we speak, Mount Hagen City Authority and Kokopo City is operating, Mr. Speaker, operating. I see no reason why Lay City Authority cannot operate. Just get your act together, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill in a statement in Parliament today announced that the government will transfer 17.4% BCO shares to landowners and the people of Bougainville. The Prime Minister says with this transfer, the people of Bougainville will own a combined shareholding of 53.8% of BCL. O'Neill says that by transferring these shares to the people, this further strengthens confidence of Bougainvillians in the peace process. Goilala MP William Sam has raised concerns on the use of rural airstrips around the country. The MP questioned the minister responsible if there are plans in place to maximize the use of rural airstrips. Civil Aviation Minister David Davis Stephen in response said there are plans under the Rural Airstrip Agency and the government is keen on seeing rural airstrips develop to full capacity. The Goilala MP started his questions by commending the work of the Civil Aviation Ministry, saying Goilala District is now benefiting. However, he questioned if there are plans in place to see these airstrips being fully utilized. Our problem we have seen, Mr. Speaker, is that even if we get the airstrip fixed, there won't be any aircraft to serve the airstrips. The minister in response said the civil aviation industry continues to face challenges. 
He, however, commended the work by MPs who are working close to see rural airstrips being built in the district. I also register on this uh, occasion my gratitude to all the open members, the leaders who in this house who have uh, shown leadership and provided budget support in ensuring that our airstrips are um, restored in this term of parliament. The minister said while rural airstrips are being subsidized by local MPs, he commended the work of church-run aviation companies operating in rural areas. It has been the mission-run um, mission uh, airlines and operators that have continued to carry the burden of our air services, our air transport to our rural people. The minister said the government is committed to the industry and wants to see all areas of the country have access to air services. I'm happy to announce that we have now created exemptions uh, for those operators that are committed to serving our rural areas where they are exempted from paying uh, fees, lending fees and other charges imposed by National Airports Corporation and PNG ASL. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. Progress has been made between the PNG and Australian governments to close the Manus Regional Processing Centre. Today, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill met with Australian Immigration Minister Peter Dutton in Port Moresby to discuss the progress of the closure of the centre. This agreement came after the PNG Supreme Court's ruling on April 26, which condemned the centre as unconstitutional and ordered its closure. PNG and Australia have finally agreed for the center to be closed. There are a series of options that the both governments undertook so that the process is not rushed but carried out carefully. This is taking into account the interest of the people of Papua New Guinea and the well-being of asylum seekers and refugees. I think just over 600 are deemed to be uh, genuine refugees. Uh, the rest are uh, not genuine ref refugees, just people uh, uh, considered as economic migrants. Uh, but many of them, a lot of them, including uh, those who just came from Nauru for medical treatment here, uh, have lost all their travel documents and are unable to travel uh, uh, out of the country. This is the uh, predicament that we are facing. We cannot just uh, put them on a plane and send them to a, a third country because they will send them back to us. It has been three years since the asylum seekers were transferred to Manus for processing before resettling them to other countries as refugees. Their coming here was under an arrangement between Australia and PNG governments in 2012 after they sought asylum in Australia. In 2013, the then opposition leader, Belden Nama, took to the court on whether the detaining of asylum seekers in Manus was contrary to their constitutional rights of personal liberty guaranteed in the Constitution. In April 26, 2016, the Supreme Court ruled that the asylum center is unconstitutional and the asylum seekers are illegally detained and had ordered for its closure. Uh, we have informed uh, the Australian uh, uh, minister and, his, and our officials there that uh, our government is, uh, has no choice but to implement the court's decision and we are uh, slowly progressing that in an orderly manner. However, a new matter that arose in court after the ruling was the question on who was responsible for the relocation. This matter will return to court in August 22 for the lawyers representing to explain to the court order number six in the ruling, which ordered for both governments to relocate the asylum seekers because neither has taken any steps. Today, both governments announced that they are working together to close down the center. Basenata Yama, National MTV News. A New Guinea's cabin crew operations manager was arrested and charged after she jokingly told security guards at the Jackson's International Airport that her bag contained a bomb. The 58-year-old Sir Lankin was charged under the Summary Offences Act for issuing bomb threats. Pereira was on her way to Sri Lanka when she joked about a bomb in her bag 
in her bag. Her joke turned into a security threat and she was offloading including her, offloaded including her luggage. The matter was reported to airport police and further investigations led to her arrest yesterday. Airport Police Station Commander Robert Wani said such threats will not be taken lightly as it puts the lives of other passengers at risk. And, uh, and for us, you know, we see that you know, this kind of threats cannot be taken lightly because of the current situation that's happening in the world. So uh, PNG is part of the global community and you know, we need to put a stop to all this, uh, uh, whether it's by words or by actions. We, we need to put a stop to this. And uh, uh, she was brought in yesterday, uh, was formally arrested and charged and uh, taken to Boroba in the afternoon and then she was finally released on uh, bail of uh, 300 kina. So she's currently out on bail uh, at the moment now. Among stories after the break, the coffee cupping competition in Leh and Air New Guinea pays tribute to Milne province. Stay with us. Welcome back. The National Coffee Cupping Competition has begun in Lay with farmers from more than 100 cooperatives seeing the process of coffee tasting and grading firsthand. Coffee samples from various parts of the country were put through vigorous tests with the final results expected to open up avenues for farmers in international markets. The competition has also allowed farmers to see the need to maintain quality and consistency. The cupping experts were hard at work this morning. A long process of tasting and smelling the aroma of coffee from various parts of Papua New Guinea will eventually end with the announcement of a winner who will almost be guaranteed international recognition and access to international markets. For nearly all the farmers who've come to Lay City for the national coffee cupping competition, this has been an experience of a lifetime. For the first time, many are seeing for themselves how important their coffee is to international tasters and importers. For Jiwaka coffee farmer Philip Sim, the experience has changed his perspective of coffee farming. You meet total quantity and quality. Number of bags, it doesn't matter. But number of bags, two of must come one time, smell blown and taste blown one time. So, I'm looking at all the other things. I'm testing this. I'm looking at the local farmers, I'm looking at the local group. I'm looking at the quality. Nearly all the farmers come from some of the most inaccessible parts of Papua New Guinea. Each has come with a tale that makes the coffee story all the more worth it when it hits the international market. Dr. Nelson Simbikin, head of the CIC's research into integrated farming systems, said what many people don't realize is that Papua New Guinean coffee is much sought after because of its aroma and taste. Overseas buyers are willing to pay a higher price for it. One of the things that we thought in the coffee industry is to bring your farmers to a uh, marketing avenue. Let the farmers interact with coffee uh, buyers overseas. And one of the avenue is the National Cupping Competition. And that is where farmers have the first time of seeing what their coffee does. I mean by talking about farmers, but me. you may need more low, low coffee garden, but upset, low set low quality, you may need to study more. New opportunities are starting to present themselves as the coffee industry grows. And while many Papua New Guineans produce the coffee, not many drink the ground coffee that we produce. And the CIC is now trying to encourage more local consumption. Scott Waide, National MTV News, Lei. Shandong Ying Jian Industry, one of five contractors officially approved by the National Executive Council and National Housing Corporation for the National Housing Project on Duran Farm, has clarified its house prices. This follows wrong information from another contractor in the same project last weekend, which was aired on MTV News. Following months of no progress on the project, Shandong Yingjiang's entry into the project has seen 13 houses built in three weeks. The company has stated that its houses come in three, four and even five bedrooms. Their three-bedroom houses are worth 350,000 kina, their four bedrooms 400,000 kina and their five-bedroom houses are going for 450,000 kina. The company says the efficiency in building these houses is a result of the new age technology used in their buildings. 
And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3155 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3080 US dollars, 0.3969 Australian dollars, 0.2700 Euro and 30.57 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, coffee, cocoa and copra closed higher while gold closed the day lower. Crude oil closed lower while palm oil and copper closed the day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 84.03 points lower and the ASX is trading at 3.02 points higher and the Ordinaries is trading at 2.53 points higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. National Planning Minister Charles Abel has applauded the work carried out by the National Airports Corporation that has seen major improvements on airport infrastructure around the country. Minister Abel says the National Airports Corporation has shown its commitment to the people of Papua New Guinea by changing the image of some airport facilities, beginning with the main entry port of Port Mosby. The government's investments in improving infrastructure in the country has seen major changes to the airport facilities. Minister Abel said the National Airports Corporation has done a tremendous work delivering to the government's expectations. This includes the rural airstrips program in the country. Program the development of the, uh, all those uh, provincial airstrips that uh, have already been named. And uh, if you look at the beautiful Mount Hagen uh, new terminal up there, it's a wonderful example of some of the quality investment that government is doing and the good work through uh, some of our SOEs and uh, in particular National Airports Corporation there the various uh, airport extension work that is done, been doing, the work that has happened here in Port Moresby alone to the international domestic terminal uh, work, which is significantly upgraded and uh, magnificent as our main entry point in the Papua New Guinea, uh, that facelift to the international airport in particular is really magnificent. A New Guinea Board Chairman Sir Prairie Cryer also was satisfied with the outcome of quality work by the National Airports Corporation. While Papua New Guinea remains very dependent on commercial air services, Enugini was very pleased of its own modernization program accompanied by the largest airport redevelopment program. We thank the national government for this visionary program that does not just benefit the traveling public, it also benefits the nation's airlines including Enugini. The redevelopment of Port Moresby, Hagen, Goroka, Ley and Oskins airports and the newest inclusion of Buka, announced recently, with others to be added in the future, is delivering massive benefits of the whole air travel sector. The airport redevelopment program lays the foundation and growth of the tourism industry. National Tourism Minister Tobias Kulang says the airline industry plays a crucial role in tourism that allows access to key markets. The price in front uh, and the cost of Travelers come into the country, airlines continue to play a, a key role. And then you, can, you lead the charge in the front. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. Milne Bay Province has been recognized for its important contribution to the airline and tourism industry in Papua New Guinea. As a token of appreciation, national flag carrier Air New Guinea has named its latest Focus 70 Alotau. Board Chairman Sir Frederick Raya says Milne Bay has contributed significantly to Air New Guinea's growth, supporting the flight services to Gurney and other small ports in the province. Fabian Hakalit has more. Milne Bay province is one of Papua New Guinea's tourism destinations with its capital, Alotau, an identified spot under the national government tourism zone support initiative program. And you can is supporting this program and will continue to meet the travel needs of the Million Bay people. Our services to Gany Airport are well supported by the people and businesses of the province and increasingly by tourists from within Papua New Guinea and overseas 
who want to experience the outstanding tourism adventures the province offers. Alpha November Tango named Alothau is the four of nine Focus 70 aircraft acquired by Air New Guinea. This airplane's form a central component of the major refleeting and fleet upgrading program Air New Guinea is undertaking. Air New Guinea has now taken delivery of four Focus 70 aircraft with a fifth to join our fleet next month. There will be a further two and possibly four additions to the fleet over the next 18 months, bringing the total in the FOCA fleet, there's FOCA 100 and FOCA 70, to 15 airplanes. Milanbi Provincial Governor Titus Philemon says the airline industry is an important sector that drives economic activities. I want to thank you all in the management for uh, once again uh, naming this uh, FOCA 70 Alta. Once again, on behalf of the government and the people of Melbourne province, I want to thank you. Thank you. And uh, giving us this, uh, naming us this aircraft is not only going to serve Alta, of course, it's going to serve the rest of the country as well. But I, be I believe it has a long haul capacity with the extra fuel tanks on board there. And the idea was that sometime in the near future, in the near future, we're able to put on, uh, starting with seasonal direct flights uh, from Brisbane into Gurney. The unveiling of the name Alotau on Alpha November Tango was led by Milan Bay Governor Titus Philemon and National Tourism Minister Tobias Kulang. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. The increase in crime rate in Port Moresby is now a concern for city police. NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Ben Turi says the public must take extra precaution or become victims. The city police boss said armed robbery, murder and car theft are reported daily in stations in the city. Crime is on the rise in Port Moresby, says NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Ben Turi. Turi said business houses must be cautious when moving cash or other valuable items around the city. He also warned car owners as car theft by opportunists is becoming an everyday thing. Take extra precautions. When you go into your street or house in the night, look who's following you behind. Okay, don't just go blindly stop your car and uh, open the gate. Call your uh, relatives to be ready, alert, and then you drive into your vehicle. And those business houses that keep money, I've always uh, stressed that put all money into the bank quickly and make sure we all play safe, okay? The NCD Metropolitan Superintendent also raised concerns of the shortfall in manpower for units in patrolling the city. Despite this, tourists said police will engage in cabin crime in the city. Our manpower is still uh, down. We still uh, need... Daily reported crimes in NCD include arm holdups, murder, stealing and car theft. Just yesterday, a body of a central man was found after being attacked by sea pirates. Police also issued warnings to seafarers to be aware on the rise in sea piracy. Police also made known that sexual penetration of minor is also on the rise in suburbs and settlements. Murder, sexual penetration is on the rise. And the land graving issue. Okay, so land graving is now out of control. Jack Lopave, Jr. National MTV News. The Morabe Provincial Police Command, with the support of the police department, are working in partnership with Huan District to set up a surveillance center. The center will be located at the Morabe Patrol Post area and will be responsible for combating sea piracy. It takes about three hours on a boat to reach Morobe Patrol Post from Lei, and within this time, criminals take advantage of the lack of police presence to rob passengers traveling on boat. The Provincial Police Command is now taking steps to combat sea piracy. Morobe Command, with the support from the police headquarters, are working together with UN District to build a civilian center. For so long, and there was no police personnel at Morabe Patrol Post. And also we have received a lot of uh, complaints about sea piracy along the waters of coastal waters. And also we're trying to get there to uh, trying to look around to see if we can uh, build a, a center there for civilian center for the sea piracy. On Saturday, a three-man team comprising Morabe Police Commander Chief Superintendent Augustin Wampe 
ACP for Northern Region Peter Guinness and the UN District Administrator traveled to the Morobe patrol post area. But the purpose for us to get there is uh, we're trying to uh, arrange for the police to be based in Morobe. Uh, the provincial command has two boats and are now making arrangements for four officers to be deployed at the outstation. Many of the public servants who were sent there to work left due to the law and other problem in the community. The lack of police manpower is also responsible for the law and other issue in the area. The civilian center boosted with police officers will help to deter crimes from happening as well as restoring public confidence in the community. In the last 12 months, piracy cases have risen with at least two incidents reported to police every week. Many of the coastal villages have fallen victim. But due to the limited capacity and resources, it is making police work more difficult to crack down on sea piracy. Matalubis, National MTV News, Lay. At around noon today, a section of the Independence Drive was completely blocked off by a group from Sialum heading to Boundary Road for a peace reconciliation ceremony. Last year, three men were killed and many injured as homes were burnt down during clashes between different ethnic groups. Today, the Sialum people brought four cows for a peace reconciliation ceremony. Vehicles on Independence Drive momentarily came to a halt today because of four cows and a small group of youths from Sialum making their way to Boundary Road for a peace reconciliation ceremony. It's an important event that marks the end of fighting between three ethnic groups that claim the lives of three men. Lay City Law and Order Chairman Sam Oyaya says the ceremony will happen on Sunday. Last year, several houses were burnt, at least three men were killed and others seriously injured. One of the main reasons for the fight was alcohol consumption. Lay District Law and Order Committee, in partnership with the Lay Community Policing Unit, have restored normalcy in the community. The cows will be handed over to two other groups involved in the clash last year. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News, Lay. More school inspectors are needed to thoroughly inspect the progress of schools in the country, says Nuku MP Joe Sungi. He said this during a question time in Parliament to Education Minister Nick Kuman. Eric Harupma with this report. Mr. Sungi said there have been limited number of school inspectors, formerly standard offices, to inspect schools in his electorate. His statement comes after there were timely inspections on the progress of Nuku High School and other feeder schools. Especially for Sundown, we haven't had any inspections done to my two, two high schools in Nuku. And I, I'd like to ask the minister to find out and give us a response and also tell me if there's anything uh, that is stopping them from not conducting quarterly or, or six monthly inspections as is to be before. Responding to Sungi's questions, Education Minister Nikuman says this is because of less school inspectors to visit schools compared to the increasing number of schools. For Nuku, unfortunately, there were only five schools been visited this year. Out of the 50, 56 schools uh, in, in the district, and 30 teachers were inspected of, out of the 278 teachers in Nuku. Disappointing that uh, uh, the, standard or st the school inspectors were not able to visit all the schools uh, in your electorate, and, not, and, and the number of teachers in the, in the electorate as well. He added that housing and mobility is also a problem for school inspectors, saying they were given only 2,500 kina to operate. The Education Minister responded that taking into consideration, the Education Department will increase school inspectors by 89 personnel. For Nuku case, um, um, it's rather disappointing that uh, 
we had only a few inspections, and I, I want to assure the member that um, I'll get a secretary to ensure the school inspectors must visit uh, the schools in Nuku and for that matter in most of the rural areas of this country. Thank you. Eric Arupma, National MTV News. A book containing stone heritage stories from around PNG and Asia was launched recently in Jiwaka province. The book is an initiative of PNG chapter of the Coordinating Committee of Geoscience Programs of East and Southeast Asia. Mineral Resource Authority Managing Director Philip Sama launched the book in front of communities in Aviamp Primary School. In the PNG chapter, Stone, Stone Stories features from the Hukoha village in CY Autonomous Region of Bougainville, Kunjin in Jiwaka and Kubram village in Dagua, East Sipik Province, and Kirota in the Northern Province. Today marked Indonesia's 71st independence anniversary. Indonesians in Papua New Guinea joined their countrymen all over the world in celebration. The country gained independence on the 17th of August 1945 from its colonial rulers, the Dutch. Indonesians in Port Moresby gathered at the embassy to commemorate the day in the most traditional way. Dancers traveled all the way from Indonesia to join the celebrations. Each mother dressed their children in white tailor-made attires to symbolize the spirit of peace and unity by which they gathered. Indonesian ambassador to PNG Ronald Manik said it was a day to honor the sacrifices of national leaders who pushed for independence in the face of objection from others who chose to settle for more autonomy. Setting a moment for us as Indonesian people to thanks our founding father, our heroes who have fought and died for the independence. Because you know, our independence is not, it is not a given or a gift from some, someone or any particular country, but. The ambassador added he wanted his people to continue their forefathers' legacy as a country that can thrive in the international arena. Melissa Gaviro, National MTV News. True Guy Sports is next. Don't go away. True Guy Sports. Welcome to True Guy Sports. SB Hunters Justin Olam, Bland Abavu and Adex Wera have been suspended following a video review by the QRL Judiciary. Olam and Abavu have been suspended for one week, while Wera has been suspended for two weeks. Elijah Lavette with this report. Olam was charged for a shoulder charge while Abavu was cited for a dangerous throw and dangerous contact in last weekend's match. Wera was charged for a dangerous throw and will see him miss the next two remaining season proper games. This suspension and the season-ending injury to center Thompson Tete has forced coach Michael Marum to rush in Noel Zeming and Stargroth Amien back from injuring to the starting lineup. Both Zeming and Amien have been out for the past six weeks. Zeming with a hand injury while Amien has just recovered from a knee injury. Amien will start in his accustomed position at fullback, while Zeming in the centers. Marum has also included Wartovo Puara Jr., Adam Korave and Nixon Borana back after eight weeks in an extended 19-man squad. Marum will finalize the traveling 18-man team on Thursday afternoon. The team travels to Cairns on Friday morning for the game against Northern Pride at Balo Park on Sunday at 3.35 p.m. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. In AFL, the PNG Under-17 women's team is training in preparation for the Queensland State Championship in October. Training alongside them is the Under-14 men's team, also preparing for the upcoming Brisbane National Championship. Selections were done last July during the Regional Development Carnivals. Selections for the under-17 girls and the under-14 boys were done from Port Mosby, Leigh, Kavian, Kimber and Mount Hagen. 
AFLPNG Senior Development Officer Ian Kames said the players selected from other centres have development officers on ground and trainings are done respectively. We have a simple uh, basic uh, test, testing skills like agility and 20 meter sprint from uh, the regional national championship. And then from there we select them from the 20 meter sprint. 20k and then we have agility test and from there once they pass their mark and then we select them from there. AFL PNG has been sending an under 14 team to Brisbane for the last 10 years and this year is no different. This will also be the second year for the under 17 girls to participate in the Queensland under 17 state championship. Uh, normally uh, we just uh, basically uh, focus on our, on our skills and also on our strength and condition. And you know, most of the time we uh, always think about physicals and then uh, and etc. Yeah, something like that. But uh, we always uh, put our focus on skills and uh, strength and condition. Yeah. Kame added, team members from other centers will all come together for training camps in October before the travel dates. Dini Rose Raiko, National MTV Sports. The 2016 Three Peaks racing event hosted by the Royal Papua Yacht Club over the weekend saw competitors in three grueling stages from yacht racing to swimming and running. Winsong came out on top, clocking in 2 hours, 50 minutes and 42 seconds, followed by DHL and Windrose in third place. The Yacht Club was abuzz during the weekend with competitors lined up to compete in the Three Peaks racing event. The race began from just outside the Royal Papua Yacht Club where yachts lined up and raced to the first location which was Manubara Island where runners swam to shore then raced to the top of the hill and back down to their yachts before racing to the next destination which was Lolorua Island where the runners had to perform the same task. The final leg of the race was back to the yacht club for the yachts and the runners had to face the toughest leg of the competition. <laughs> the top of Burns Peak and back to complete the race. The race saw competitors push their bodies to the limit as they braved the blazing Port Moresby sun and strong winds to compete in the Three Peaks racing event. At the end of the day, the results of the competition were as follows. Winsong came out on top, clocking in 2 hours, 50 minutes and 42 seconds, followed by DHL and Windrose in third place. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. More sports news next. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome back. The ITI Palm Cricket 2016 season has entered its final round of competition. The Premier's Division and the women's will play their finals while reserve grade heads into elimination rounds. The women's final three has IBS, Poriporna, Dulux United and Swire Shipping Hoods all in contention for top position. The women's division will also face replace for Dulux United and IBS Poriporna which will ultimately decide the minor premiership. In the men's premier division, Dulux United are ahead. Despite being on by this weekend, they will take out the minor premiership five games ahead and sealing their dominance for this season. The Swire Shipping Hoods and Pacific MMI Coasters Clash will determine the double chance as IBS Poriporna looks set to consolidate second spot despite all being on equal points. Despite a great debut this season, JND Imana Kone just missed out on net run rate. Traditional rivals IBS Poriporna and Dulux United square off to see who meets them next weekend. Badili Hardware Wanderers leap to fourth placing on the ladder and will meet Pure Water Raukele for the first elimination final this weekend. Swa Shipping Hoods claim the reserves minor premiership and will rest this weekend. Meanwhile, the under 13, 15, 17 and under 19 have gone through finals last month with Dulux United claiming the under 13 and 19 title while IBS Poroporna acquired the under 15 and under 17 2016 title. Dini Rose Raiko, National MTV Sports. The 2020 PNG Games bid is now open for all interested provinces. This announcement was made by Chairman of PNG Games Council and Executive Director of PNG Sports Foundation, Peter Chamalili, at the recently held executive meeting in Port Mosby. Interested provinces can now access the bid documents from PNG Sports Foundation and lodge their bid before the closing date on 25th September of this year. 
The Executive Committee of the Games Council has determined a guideline for bidding teams to meet the basic requirements to host the Games. In an interview with Deputy Chairman of PNG Games Council, John Boino, he confirmed that the 9th PNG Games in 2020 is open for bidding. The bid is open for 2020, uh, so if they need information on the bid, they should get in touch with the PNG Games Secretariat immediately or the Sports Foundation if they're interested to bid for the 2020 Games. Boino says the resolution concerning the 7th PNG Games Council, which will be hosted by West New Britain from 26th November to 10th December 2016, has been laid out. The three major things that I wanted to stress on that was the, the bid is open uh, for Papua Nini to bid. Uh, but as I said, if they want some more information on the clarity of uh, what we determine on what some of the requirements, they should get in touch with Sports Foundation or the PNG Games Secretary the ASF. And for the uh, the provinces to stick as much as possible to the charter and confine to the charter on eligibility. The deadline for the entry by name and accreditation is 31st August 2016. Of course, the deadlines for the entry by names has been deferred to the 31st of uh, uh, August. So that's the two important ones. And also for the athletes to conform as much as possible to the charter. On eligibility, the residency qualifications for athletes are either born in the represented province or be resident of not less than six months of the represented province. The council completed a long process of consultations with stakeholders to amend the Games Charter, which was adopted for use at the meeting held in Kimbe, in which the previous charter becomes outdated and should be discarded to avoid confusion and misinterpretation. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. And that ends Chukai Sports. We'll have the weather details for the next 24 hours after the break. Sports. True Kai Sports. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Fine in Daru, fine and cloudy in Port Moresby, cloudy in Kerma and Alotau, and rain and drizzle in Popundeta. In the Momase region, rain and drizzle in Lei, Wau, Medang, and some showers in Wiwek, and few showers in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Island region, fine in Loringau and Kavieng, some showers in Kokopo and Rabaul, cloudy periods in Kimbe, and some rain and thunderstorms in Buka. In the Highlands region, some rain and drizzles in all centers. And before we go, angry Koyari landowners are planning to shut down the water supply into Port Moresby tonight. This follows a 24-hour ultimatum given to the government to respond to their demand. The landowners have been camping at the road leading into the Sirinumu Dam since last night. The landowners are demanding the government to immediately release the outstanding 10 million kina. Their demand follows a court order issued by the National Court in Port Mosby on the release of the money. The court had ordered the committee responsible to meet and discuss on how the money will be spent. This money is part of the 50 million kina which was allocated by the national government for Koyari landowners as compensation for the Sirinumu Dam. So this is timely that the 10 million should be given to us. So we social map our clans, our BEFA groups and everybody else uh, properly. So when the commercial perspective of uh, it, the packages are given, there's no, no hiccups over there. So like people will know who they are, who rightfully owns this land, so you know everybody will be, I mean, more relaxed on that area, because right now what, uh, what we are doing is we have so many middlemen dealing with this. So when things come, because we are not organized properly, we are not identified, we are not recognized properly, so uh, it goes, it goes to waste. On Monday, the landowners presented a petition to the office of the central governor. Their demands included the immediate release of the 10 million kina. A similar petition was presented to the government earlier this year. However, locals say the government is yet to respond to that petition. Uh, last night we came and camped here 
And uh, on Monday, we went through the uh, um, presentation of the uh, what, petition to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the rep of the Honorable Kilauda's office, and the petition was delivered on Tuesday afternoon. And we haven't received any response from the government till now. Though there is a heavy police presence at Sugeri, the locals are adamant to close the water supply tonight. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. And that's the news, sports and weather for tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Helen Sayer. Pleasant viewing. Good night.